happy morning to everyone welcome to my channel biotech info and today we are going to know about the bryophytes the word bryophyte was coined by robert brown and who is the father of indian bryology professor shivram kashyap and what is the study of bryophytes known as it's known as an bryology and let us get into the characteristic or the general features of bryophytes the first one is it's a connecting link between the algae and pteridophytes already we have come across that algae which is in the form of a thallus or you can even call it as a filamentous structure and also in the spirogyra and chlamydomonas we have seen that it is consisting of a chlorophyll and that too in the form of a cup shaped chloroplast in chlamydomonas and spiral shaped chloroplast in spirogyra that's why we have called the algae as a green colored thallus like structures and here you are not going to see a well developed vascular system now in the pteridophytes what happens you are going to see an evolution in the plants and here you are going to observe the well developed vascular tissue so a connecting link between this algae and pteridophytes is bryophytes and the habitat where this bryophyte plants are going to survive is it is going to survive in a damp shady and also where there is a heavy rainfall it's preferred the plant species of the bryophytes like riskia markensia and funaria or the masses or liver rots horn rots which are the species of the bryophytes they prefer to survive in a damp humid and a shaded places with a heavy rainfall and also bryophytes are the amphibians of the plant kingdom amphibians only represents the species which is able to survive both in the land and in water so here bryophyte is also an amphibious uh, in of the plant kingdom why we are calling because they are able to live in the soil and they are going to depend on the water for reproduction that's why we are going to call it as an amphibians of the plant kingdom like how in an animal kingdom frog is an example of an amphibian like that only here in the plant kingdom the bryophyte is going to be called as an amphibians of the plant kingdom bryophytes are not true successful plants we are not going to call these plants as a true or a successful plants why we are not going to call them because here you are not going to observe the true roots root like structures are present called as rhizoids but they are not true roots and these roots which we are calling it as a rhizoids may be unicellular or multicellular unicellular rhizoids are present in a plant species like rixia and markensia and multicellular rhizoids are present in the funaria and the thallus is not dependent like for example it is not differentiated into root stem or leaves in the bryophytes also but in some species this thallus may be prostrate erect or attached to the substratum and thallus is green and it is independent where you are going to see that it is green and independent means you are going to observe in rixia and also in the markensia and thallus is folios folios means having a leafy floral axis like structure or a leafy axis is present in funaria or the mass plant we are going to observe the foli uh, foliage structure and also in the sphagnum now it is going to exhibit like for example is the life cycle of the bryophytes is haplodiplontic means we are going to observe the gametophytic and sporophytic phases in the life cycles of the bryophytas plant species if you are watching my video for the first time don't forget to subscribe my channel and click the bell icon let us get into the life cycle of the uh, bryophytes the first whenever we are studying about the life cycles we have to start with the thallus because thallus it is a not differentiated into root stem or leaves we know it and it is going to be called it as an gametophytic 
now it is consisting of like n or you can even call it as an haploid one now this gametophytic haploid thallus is going to have like in uh, different uh, uh, species will have one species will have an antheridia and another one is going to have the archegonia antheridia is going to be produced by the anthrozide mother cells and archegonia are in the form of a flask shape and antheridia will be in the round or the oval shape and this uh, round or the oval shaped or the flask shape archegonia or antheridia they are going to be jacketed means they are going to be protected from the external factors now here archegonia which is in the flask shape it is going to consisting of a neck canal cells and winter canal cells and also it consists of the egg cells in the center and in the an antheridium you are going to see the oval or a round shaped structure when these two are like it is going to have a process called as an fertilization it is going to form the zygote the zygote after the mitotic divisions it is going to produce the embryo from here the sporophytic phase of life cycle is going to be started because we have given that life cycle of the bryophyte is haplodiplontic means it is going to exhibits the haploid stage as well as a diploid stage haploid it means of gametophytic and diploid means it is a sporophytic haploid n number and diploid it's a 2n number so here after the embryo is formed it is going to be called it as 2n the name that we are going to give for that is a sporophyte sporophyte which is consisting of a sporangium that sporophyte which is consisting of a sporangium and that sporangium is also differentiated into three parts that is a food seta and capsule and that capsule is going to produce the spores and now here this poor mother cells which is consisting of 2n or a diploid number is going to have a meiosis the meiosis which is going to be called it as in a reductional division because here after the formation of a zygote it is going to have an mitosis which is an equilational division now here in the spore mother cells it is going to have a meiotic division which is called as an reductional division so obviously 2n number it's going to divide into n number and that is going to be called as a spores now these spores are going to germinate in masses in masses means what the funerias the spores are going to germinate and it is going to develop into a primary protonema and then it is going to form the secondary protonema on the secondary protonema you are going to observe the birds and third birds are going to germinate and forms the gametophytic thallus it's going to happen only in the masses but in case of the liver rods and the horn rods which are also the plant species belongs or comes under the bryophyta this spores after germination directly it is going to form into a gametophytic thallus like structure if you are watching my video for the first time don't forget to subscribe my channel and click the bell icon